Welcome to this video of Access APS NZ Tax. In this video, we're going to look at how to prepare an IR3 tax return. Here's our agenda. We're going to look at the details and notes, the pre-pop from Inland Revenue, how to add additional data into the IR3 return. Then we're going to show how to attach an IR10 and enter the IR10 information. And then we'll move the return ready for approval. So let's now head over to our client returns. Here we've got the dashboard of all our client returns. Now I do recommend if you've not seen the video on navigation and how to open a tax return, I would recommend watching that first. From here, we can select the client that we want to search for. Once we've selected that client, you'll see they've got the previous years here. If you do need to review any previous year returns other than 2024, you will need to review those in desktop. But let's open the 2024 return. This is going to open a new tab for us in the web. You'll see here we start at the details screen. Under here, our form information, we've got different options to select. The return calculation date. If you select a date within that field, that will block the return from being lodged until that date comes due. You've also got options to answer the yes or no questions for held rights and part year returns. If I did at this point start the tax return, that would take me to the next step of pre-pop, but we'll just stay on the details screen for now. This section here is where you can add some notes, maybe for the entity, the individual or the tax return itself. These notes are not sent to the Inland Revenue and they are for internal use only. So that's an option under the details tab in here as well. Once you've completed the return and you've chosen to generate the reports, this is where they'll be listed under Documents and Reports under the Details tab. Let's head now over to Pre-Pop up here, or we could have simply just selected to Start Tax Return. With my database just being a staging mock database, I actually don't have the option to get Pre-Pop from Inland Revenue to show you in this example. But for your scenarios where you are logged in to my IR up here, you are able to select and download that pre-pop data direct from Inland Revenue so that it pre-populates all that information into our income on our tax return. Now I've entered some information so that we can see what it would look like when we come through from pre-pop. The employee income would be pre-populated and it's also picked up some New Zealand interest. To view these, we just simply select that down arrow and that will bring out the source of that information. The number in the bubble relates to how many items are within that key point. So under interest, we've got two items listed and under employee income, we saw there was just one item listed. We can keep them open if we want to see the return detail as we're working through. Following pre-pop, if I did need to add a new source in interest or any other key points, we would simply add item here and that would bring me the secondary option to put any interest in. We are also able to delete. Please note that there isn't a secondary warning for delete in the first release. So deleting this line here will also delete that line. So please be careful when you are deleting things in the tax return. In this example, we're going to add in some overseas income. So we open the drop down and add item. And then we just enter our information that we need. select the income type and select the country as well. Once we've added that overseas income and scroll back up to the top, you'll see that it's automatically added the IR1261 form. This will be filed as a subform with the IR3 when you lodge this return to the Inland Revenue. If you need to make any amendments, then you can make that from within the income and the overseas tab here. If you want to remove the overseas income for any reason, you just can delete the item and you'll see that the IR1261 form has automatically been deleted as well. Once you've entered in all the relevant information and you've reviewed what's against Inland Revenue and you're happy to proceed, I would recommend now saving the return before you continue on to calculations. To save the return, we can hit the save return icon at the bottom right hand side of the screen. If you forget to save return and you do go to different areas of the income tax return, then don't worry, your data will still be there, but it is recommended to save the return 
when you're happy with the data that you've got in because if you do close the web browser tab you will lose the information if the returns not saved now moving on to calculations we're going to enter some pi income for this individual so again just like before we can open up the key point and add an item you'll see here that we've got retrieve the pir rate this will give you the inland revenue rate that they are holding for this individual you can now check if that rate is correct against the income for the previous two years and you can also override that by selecting the rate for calculation down here as well so in this example we'll put 28 and we'll just put our pi income in here once you've entered the relevant information again you've got the option to add another item if there is more pi income to introduce or we can simply close that key point and continue continuing from here is going to take us to the summary again i do recommend save the return before you do move on even though we're moving through the return you'll still see that the return is in a draft status this will stay in draft until i've selected that this return is ready for review once you've entered all the information in the income tax return and looked at the calculations and added any additional in there, we do have the summary screen of the tax return and at the bottom it will have the following year's provisional tax. You are able to change this from within here if you'd like to override the standard to estimation and then you can change that as well. Going back to standard, you'll see that that field is locked because I've let the system calculate this, which has done the correct uplift on this year's tax to pay. Now, if that was just a DIR fee return, we would now send that as ready for approval. But as I mentioned in the agenda, I'm going to show you how we can attach the IR10. From here, we go to return actions and we look at adding attachments and the attachment type is IR10. We do have the other subforms, the 833 for sale of property and the IR215 for working for families and any income adjustments for the student loan. I'm going to select the IR10 and click add. Scrolling back up to the top, you'll see my subform has been added here as part of my IR3 return. When I click on that header for the IR10, I'm now able to enter my IR10 information and submit that with the IR3 tax return direct to Inland Revenue. In this first release, we currently don't have the automation of the IR10 coming directly from XPA. If you've been relying on that function in desktop, then please know that that automation is coming soon. For now, the workaround is that you'll have to enter that information manually into the IR10. I've also done a video in this series of how to set up the IR10 tag sets in XPA so that the IR10 can easily be reported on and those figures manually entered into the cloud IR10 form. If you've attached a form in error, you can scroll to the very bottom and delete attachment. Deleting the attachment will remove the attachment and it will not roll into the future years. Leaving the attachment here gives the return the ability to roll with that subform. So for 2025, this IR3 will automatically have an IR10 attached to it. Once I'm happy and I've done all my data entry, I come back to summary and I can then select that my return is ready for approval. I can then notify the approver that that tax return is ready to review. Please see the short video in this series on the status floor of our web forms. Thank you for watching this short video where we've looked at the IR3, where the detail and notes are on the first tab. Then we looked at moving to the second tab of pre-pop from Inland Revenue. The third tab being income, where we added that data into the IR3 return. And then we added our pie income into the calculations and then checked out the summary before attaching our IR10 subform. We also showed how to move the return from draft to ready to review. Please continue to watch the videos in this series to build on your knowledge of our new cloud tax returns.